Hello and welcome everyone to the Morning Bradley Designs YouTube channel. I am Stephanie Reese, your host. I wanted to thank you for joining me today on my jewelry making journey. Um, I am using products from jessejamesbeads.com and I absolutely love all the variation in color. We've got some very fiery reds and oranges and yellow with some black and whites and these awesome Jack and Sally pendant and the Oogie Boogie guy with the three little guys. Um, and I am on moving forward with how I stitched on this chain. This is a really cool twisted Lynx chain that I got from Jesse James Beads. And I sort of just was asking the question to myself, I wonder if I could stitch some seed beads onto that, onto the sides of the links. So I took a few minutes and obviously um, you can wire wrap them, which I really liked. I took each of the different colors of the seed beads and I'm basically just wire wrapping them with some 26 gauge silver wire to one of the sides of one of the links. And I just love how they interlock like that. And then I came up onto the opposite end of the next section and I stitched again. So I'm going to show you how I did that one today. But then I've also been working on how you could, if you didn't want to use wire, um, you could use, um, you could do a, a stitch of sorts with, um, I used Fireline on this one, on this first link. And then on this, I can get them. Oops, I've gotten them all. Okay, there we go. I used Supple Max on this second link, and you can barely even see the thread there, which I really enjoyed. Um, so I think um, I will start first by showing you the stitching method that I did. My first inclination when I tried this was to try to do a Pico stitch, but I couldn't really get um, the Pico style stitch that I love to sit correctly on top of the link. Uh, with no matter what material I used. I tried the Supple Max, I tried the Fireline, I tried um, uh, Eslon as well, or Nymo thread. Um, and they are separate types of thread, but I tend to call them all Nymo. I think this is Eslon uh, thread, which is a little stronger and um, is supposed to be, I think, UV resistant, I believe. But I put a little bit of wax on it and I tried doing my Pico stitch and I didn't, I, I did had no success using it. Um, but I always believe that um, there's always a different way or another way to try to do things, um, you know. So I ended up going back to the brick stitch. And that's how I did the stitching on the side. So I my first row is a brick stitch. <clears throat> And then when I come back on the top, I modified the brick stitch. It is, it's just modified where I skipped a bead in between to mimic the Pico stitch. So I thought we would try that first. And again, this is fire line. And the reason why I didn't like the fire line is look, my stitching kind of got real bulky right there when I came to the end, when I came back from here and I went to tie off. So it got really bulky. And I'm also not really sure that I, I liked it showing around the beads. But for this purpose, with whatever you do choose, Fireline does come in different sizes. I just happen to have on hand this um, this one. It's a 0.30 millimeter and they do come in some smaller sizes. So I, I wouldn't, you know, um, they have also other colors and I think they also have clear. <clears throat> so if you liked the Supple Max, you could always get a smaller uh, diameter of the Fireline or millimeter rather. I think they have a six pound and a four pound. So that would probably work very well going in and out of the stitches. I also broke two needles using this fire line. So there is that. And hopefully I'm saving you from breaking your needles by having already done it for you. Um, again, they're different colors and there is a smaller um, millimeter if you want to try the fire line. 
Um, for this next one, I used Supple Max, and I had I have two on hand. I have the 0.10 or 0.25 millimeter, and I have this 0.15. Since the 0.25 is closer to the 0.30 of the fire line I had, I was really hesitant to try that. Um, because I had, like I said, I had already broken two needles. So I did try this this stitch. I used the 0.15, and that worked gloriously. Um, the only problem I had is that it did slip out of my needle. So there is that, that you're kind of, you know, it, it just got to be kind of cumbersome. So for this next link, and this should be the opposite side. There we go just wanted to make sure you saw how I stitched it. I'm stitching opposite sides. And because I don't have these two ends closed off yet, it's kind of it's kind of spinning around. So for this next one, if you can see, I've stitched on this one, so I'm going to be stitching on this back end here. Um, and I'm going to be using the um, Eslon thread. And I did give it a bit of conditioning with some wax. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle. All right, so I've got my needle thread threaded and I'm just going to go ahead and push this out of the way a little bit so you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and anchor my thread here on the end. And to do that, I'm just gonna do an overhand knot like so. And then I better get my thread back over here. It's rather long. I probably didn't need this much, um, but excuse me, the length also helps with um, getting in and out of the beads. So I'm going to go ahead and do an overhand surgeon's knot this time, and I'm going to take my needle and come through, and I'm going to hold on to this, pull my thread through, and then I'm going to come back one more time to make my surgeon's knot, like so. And it's sort of a double overhand knot, and then you're just tying it securely to the end of your link. So, I did this to where I stopped. I stopped with a, looks like a fiery orange bead. So I'm definitely going to pick up two beads. I'm going to pick up a yellow, and then I'm going to pick up this lighter color orange bead here. And you see I have them both resting onto the link here. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come through the link underneath. Like so. And I'm going to grab both of those beads so they don't go flipping under because you want your thread to be under the needle like that. And then I'm going to, you see how the two beads are sitting? I'm going to go through the top orange bead only. And this is going to be the beginning of our brick stitch. And I'm just pulling the thread through. I'm going to show you here in just one moment how it sits on the link. Excuse me. Oops. And then I'm just pushing them together, holding them tight with my fingers. There we go. Don't worry about that yellow bead. It's going to sit nicely once we come to the end. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up a yellow bead because I'm alternating the yellow in between the two orange colors. <clears throat> and I'm going to set that bead right on top of that orange bead like so. And then I'm going to pull again my thread with my needle underneath or through the link so that my thread is on top, like so. And again, I'm only going to go through the yellow bead, like that. I'm gonna show you again here in just a moment. I just don't want to lose my bead. 
So there, now they're all sitting nicely together. And you just keep adding your beads. So I'm gonna do an orange. And it's going to sit nicely on top. I'm putting my needle through the link, through the center of the link. Like so. And I'm going back through the top of that bright, the brighter orange bead. And I'm pulling it tight so it sits nextly, nicely next to the other seed beads. And now we're going to add a yellow. And you just repeat this process till you get to the other side of your link. I'm going to put my needle through the link. And I'm coming back on top through the yellow bead. And now I've done it. I've gotten it caught. There we go. And then I'm just making sure my tail. We'll deal with the tail at the end. Like so. And then you can just keep them pushed to the one side. <clears throat> So you want an even number so that your stitch, I um, didn't do an even number on the first one and so you can see how I, I have two beads left over without a bead on top. So the second one is good because I did an even number of 14. So we are going to do 14 beads. Get it straight here on the top of this link and we will come back to show you the second row. Okay, so now I have 14 beads, um, the yellow and two colors of oranges on my link. And again, this is a brick stitch. Um, so the second row, I wanted to show you how you would create it to be like a pico where you have one bead in between the t um, in between two beads. So you will have ended with your thread coming out of the last bead. So you're going to pick up and how I did it um, here was for every two beads I want to make sure I've, I'm I'm using all the colors. So I ended here with the brighter orange and I have a yellow next to it so I will use the um, lighter color orange. The next one has the lighter color orange and a yellow so on top is a the brighter color orange. So that's how I, I created it. So for this time I've got a lighter color orange with a yellow so I'm going to pick up one of the brighter oranges and again, I'm going to move it all the way down on my thread and have it sit directly on top of that lighter color orange, like so. And if you'll notice, in between where I've stitched, there's black. And that's called a bridge. Hopefully you can see that. In between each of the beads, there's the thread where it's coming in and out of the bead and that's called a bridge. So you're going to bring your thread through through the bridge between the two beads on, on the end. Like so. And you're going to pull it tight. There we go. And then you're going to go back through the bead. So just like we went through the link, you're coming through the bridge and you're going to come back through 
the bead on top. Pull your thread all the way through. Oops, I'm so sorry. Hit my hand while I'm moving that. All right, and so that is going to cause your bead to sit between the two beads. So now you want to take your thread through the yellow bead that's where the brighter one is sitting on top of. So we're just going to feed that thread through. <clears throat> and you may have to hold it with your fingers to bring it through. Hang on just a second, I'll show you. There you go. I'm just holding on to them so that it will sit tight. And we have our first brick stitch pico made. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tighten it just a little bit. All right, and now we're going to come make sure it's tight. We're going to come back up through the bead. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, sorry about that. I started to cough. Um, so I ended here where I brought my thread through my yellow bead. And just making sure everything is sitting tight and we've created our first pico. So now we're going to take our thread and needle and we're going to come up to the neat to, through that brighter color orange bead next to the yellow one we just came down. And we're going to just repeat that same process. Here we are. So now we have a bright colored orange and a yellow. So now I'm going to pick up a one of the lighter color oranges um, so that we have all three colors. Again, it's going to sit right next to, or excuse me, right on top of the red bead. And I'm going to go through that, let's see if I can get it, that black thread below the bridge and I'm pulling my needle and thread through <clears throat> and there's my bead and then I'm going to come back up with my needle and go back through the orange bead pull my thread through I'm going to show you here in just a sec and see how it's sitting on top. Now we want to go through the yellow bead that's it's sitting on top of, like so. I'm just going to put my fingers over it to hold it in place so I don't pull it down. And I'm going to have to move that out of the way. Okay, so we've made a second pico where our orange bead lighter orange bead is sitting on top and we're going to come up back up through the orange bead sitting next to that yellow bead I'm going to do it one more time so we have a lighter color orange and a yellow so we'll need a darker orange bead It's sitting right on top of the orange bead. I'm going to take my needle and thread and come through the little bridge right next to the orange, the bright orange bead. And I'm just holding it in place like so and see how it sits nicely. And then I'm just giving it a little bit of a turn so I can see the hole there. And I'm going to pass my thread, needle and thread through that orange bead, which is then going to cause my bead to sit flat on top of the two beads below it, creating another pico. Okay, and then I'm going to go down the yellow bead that's right next to that orange, that bright orange bead. I'm going to hold on to it so it stays in place. 
come down see how my beads are sitting they're sitting uh, nicely like little pumpkins on top of my brick stitch and then I'm going to come back up through that next orange bead that's right next to the yellow bead from my Pico like so and you're going to continue on down until you get to the end and then we'll finish okay so I have stitched finished stitching the second layer to create the Pico on top of the link and now I just want to tie off my piece <clears throat> my thread here so in order to do that I'm just going to come up through my link so that I can lock in that yellow bead there and I'm going to come up to the next orange bead because I want to find a spot where I can tie my knot and end. But since I already have a knot on this end, I thought maybe inside would be best. So I'm going to come back down under in that next bead, the yellow bead. And then we can find a spot to tie off. So I'm just going to take my needle through the two beads, the next two beads, the yellow and the darker orange on top of the link, like so. And I'm pulling my thread until I have a bit of a loop. And I'm just going to come in through the link and through the loop and that sort of creates an overhand knot there next to my link and I pulled it tight and I'm simply going to do it again I'm going through the two beads the darker orange and the yellow I'm pulling my thread to where I have a smaller loop here in front of my link and then I'm taking my needle and thread and I'm putting it through the loop and the loop with my thread. So I'm inside the loop and I'm going to come up one more time and that will create my locked in loop. Oops. I didn't go through my loop. Let me go back through. So I gotta make sure. Okay. I see what I did. So I'm gonna go through here to create a double. So I just went through the loop. I'm already there in front of it. That took me a minute. And so now I have, oops, I have to go the other direction. So there we go. Now I'm gonna come up one more time from the bottom. <laughs> And then that will give me my double knot there, like a surgeon's knot. And then I'm simply going to come through the next orange bead from my knot. And then I'll just feed that on down. Through. And that just hides your thread. And if your thread starts to get kinked up like that, just simply run your finger along it. And that way it sort of straightens it out and stops it from kinking up. So I'll go one more time. I'm going to go up through the next bead and then down again. And then I think that we can cut our thread. Like so. And then you can do the same thing with this tail. Since you already have a knot on the end, you'll just hide it in your beads. Okay, so I have finished stitching with my um, Eslan thread. And this is what it looks like. Um, with um, stitching. We have the fire line here, the supple max, and then the Eslon 
on this third one. Um, and then we are getting short on time, but I wanted to show you really quick how I did the other side, which I really love how the stitching came out and I had a fun time figuring that out and um, doing it. But I really love how the seed beads look circular on top of the links. I wanted to spend the remainder of our time showing you how I did that. Um, and it's fairly simple. So again, we're alternating the links. So I'm going to stitch on this side so that it's opposite of the one below. And I'm taking a about a 15 inch piece of um, German style wire and 26 gauge. You could even go finer because um, you don't need a lot of strength for this since you're just um, stitching seed beads or wire wrapping seed, seed beads. Um, but in order to do this, all I did was sort of put this down, get it a little bit warmed up a little bit so it's pliable. And I just came in and I did three, in, three wraps on the end. I'm just going to come around. And for this one, if you um, need to, you could certainly pull in some pliers to pull that end in so that it's tight. Like so. You can sort of move it in and around. And then I'm just making sure that those wraps are right next to each other. And I'm going to go one more time. There we go. And I'm just snugging them close to one another and using my pliers. And then I'm just going to push it on down towards the end here because we want it on the very end. There we go. And then I'm just going to take my flush cutters and there at the end I'm just going to give it a little clip holding on to the end piece so it doesn't fly off and then I just want to sort of snug that wire in place I'm tucking in that little that little piece there if you can see it it's hanging up so I'm just tucking that in a little bit all right so now I've got I've got it anchored with three wraps and on this other one, we ended with a light gold, or the, excuse me, a light orange. So I'm going to start with a yellow. A yellow, if I can get it on there. And then since we ended on the previous one with the light orange, I'm going to go with the dark gold. That way everything stays alternating. And I'm going to do... You know what? I think what I did on that one is I had to put the yellow... Okay, I'm sorry. So I have to put the yellow. So we'll start with the dark gold, then the bright yellow, and then we end. That way we separate the two oranges from, one, from each other. And then you just feed them on down on top of the wire and you're just bringing the wire around and sort of also creating a circular or a pico of sorts and then I'm just going to feed that wire through the center of my link making sure not to let it get um, how you say like it sometimes can get like a little kink in it like so and then you can just run your fingers along the wire so that it kind of is a little more pliable to go underneath that link and it's tight and then we're going to wrap around once right next to that orange bead there creating that little pico or round and then we're just going to keep running our fingers along the wire, coming back through in between each little round or um, 
set of beads, we're going to do two wraps, like so. And the more you run your fingers on it, the little bit easier it gets. And then I'm just snugging those wires right next to each other. And I'm just making sure that my seed beads sit on top of the wire. I want to come back down one more time. such that I've got a wrap, like so. And it's just sitting on top of the link, the side of the link. So I'm running my fingers along it again, and I ended with a bright orange. Um, I'm trying to remember. So if I ended with a bright orange, I believe I want to alternate and start with, yeah, I want to keep the bright orange. Oops. That way it's alternating. And I'm going to add a yellow. And now I'm going to add the brighter orange. And you'll see that they become, they start to alternate. All right, and so now I've got them together and I'm gonna put my wire through the link again, bringing it on down, making sure not to allow it to kink up or get a loop in it. Whoops, my bead slipped. There are advantages to just the stitching. <laughs> uh, okay, so there we go. Running my fingers along the wire. I'm holding the beads in place. And again, we're just gonna wrap two times around. So I've gone once, feeding my wire through. And you can push them together because you want them to be close, like so. And I'm going to wrap it around one more time, running my fingers along the wire so that it's nice and pliable. <coughs> and I'm just feeding it like a loop through so it doesn't get any kinks in it. And that has created our second wrap. And I'm just going to squish them together like so. And that is how I stitched on top of the wire. And you just go all the way to the end and you're going to end with three wraps on the end. So we are at 33 minutes and I wish I had more time to finish this and be able to um, share with you the finished necklace. But if you like, leave in the comments if you would like to see the finished necklace. And I can certainly create another video that shows that separately where we're finishing the necklace. Um, I do have a little bit of a sneak peek where um, this is the earrings I am creating uh, to go with this necklace. A little bit of a sneak peek. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. I certainly enjoyed sharing it with you. Thank you for being with me and sharing with me on my beading journey. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and week. Thank you.